Here to show you, say, welcome everybody to The Art of Comics. It's me, your host, Andres Salazar. This is The Art of Comics, where we talk about comic books, graphic novels, illustration. We cover the breadth of the medium, both in the art and in the business. Today, we do a quick little book review, Northlanders, by the now-defunct, now-deceased Vertigo Comics. Let me just say a quick, quick tangent. Vertigo Comics, spearheaded by uh, Karen Berger and then I think Shelley Bond was then in charge of it afterwards. Um, Will Dennis, a bunch of different editors. Some of the best stuff from DC was Vertigo Comics. I know they got Black Label. I don't even care. Black Label can just go kiss it. You know, I don't really... I just don't understand. Vertigo was so good. They had so many of the best titles. Um, from Sand, I mean, <laughs> Sandman, Preacher, Transmetropolitan, Plan, um, no, Planetary was Wildstorm. Um, just, I mean, I, I can go on and on. Anyway, Northlanders. Uh, Vertigo Comics, this is Brian Wood's story. Brian Wood, American comic book creator. I think he started with a comic, indie comic called, was it Ginny Zero or Channel Zero? Something like that. Um kind of uh, more graphics design kind of elements in his art. Then he started doing writing. Uh, I like his stuff, demo, DMZ, I think this is probably his best work. And when I saw this over at Book Off, which is a used books, DVD, you know, toys kind of shop in Torrance. It's a chain of Japanese kind of, it's a used bookstore for Japanese stuff. Um, I saw this over there. A couple days ago and it was half off this is retails for $30 you can get it for probably closer to 25 20 dollars maybe even on eBay cheaper I got this for half off I picked it up because I'm into the Nordic stuff now due to you know Vinland Saga and some of the other things I've uh, consumed lately so I'm like oh let's get this and it's big and chunky this Volume one kind of omnibus style has like I think 19 issues It's 1 through 16 then 18 and 19 then 41. So yeah, it's a big Big old chunk of 19 issues, which is kind of nice 19 issues for 15 bucks can't go wrong. I Read it. I spent the all day yesterday reading it. I thought you know what? I'm just gonna sit down and read this whole blessed thing. It's been a while since I've able to been able to consume like just a big meaty chunk of books and it was really fun. I highly encourage it. If you have an opportunity, it's kind of hard for me to just sit down and read a bunch of stuff, but I got to got to do it. Um, my overall take, I'll be honest, I liked it a lot, but I was disappointed because I didn't know what to expect with the story plot plant being type thing. In other words, um, I thought it was going to be one continuous story with these characters. Incorrect. This is more of a sections, you know, short stories that are told. Uh, you know, there's stories in here between two issues and six issues and new characters, new setting, new time. So it does not, it's not a continuous story. It is kind of more of snapshots, anthology kind of style of storytelling. And honestly, that kind of bumps me out a little bit because I just wanted a whole thing. That said, each of them are quite good. Maybe the last one didn't grab me as much. And we'll go over that. Um, but yeah, overall general thoughts, I liked it. I think the art is very serviceable. The art is very good. The writing's fine. Um, I enjoyed the writing. I mean, I, I read the whole thing. There's been things you guys know I've just like tapped out, right? I did not finish Cerebus. Um, I will probably go back to it at some point, but I just tapped out. This was a much easier read than Cerebus. <laughs> this is much more plot driven than Cerebus. Uh, let's turn the camera over, take a look at some of the art, show it to you guys, okay? Let's do it. Are you ready? Okay, let's take a look here at our fun little story. Um, 
Really like the covers. I think the covers were just, they're fabulous. I love the painting. Great stuff. Uh, let's get on. And by the way, this was done. I think this was, this was back in um, 16. Yeah, 2016. Originally, actually, 2008, 2009. So this, co this was compiled in 2016 before the pandemic. But it's been a while. It's been since, since 08. I didn't know that. Um, who do we have artist-wise? Because there's a bunch of artists. Let's, we need to break them down here a little bit. We got Dean Ormston, Danie Danielle Ziegel, David Gafflesi. Man, I don't know. It's all going to be Italians and, and Europeans. Sorry. Mary and Churchland, Ryan Kelly. Those are the artists. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry for butchering some of these names. I wasn't prepared to like start talking. Um, so, again, beautiful covers. This is serviceable art. I, I mean, I say that. I don't mean that in a bad way at all. It's very good art. Hang on. I got, should I move my camera a bit? Just a tiny bit, maybe. Okay. Uh, I just want to show this to you. I do like some of the drop shadows here. Spotting of blacks is very nice. Uh, this face here reminds me of, some of this reminds me of an artist. I think it was like Jack, what's that? Uh, Union Jack, something like that. Jack Staff, Union Jack. It's kind of an indie artist. I remember back in the day. I do like all these silhouettes. So it's a good use of like different techniques, right? Remember thinking about that Wally Wood, big head, uh, you know, silhouette, foreground, background. That's a good, that's a good like hit right there. These are good panels. This is all kind of nice, nicely done stuff. And I do like the watercolor background. This is nice as well. Uh, and I was thinking about these textures. I'm like, I wonder, cause this looks almost like he painted it, like not digitally. He could have done it digitally. This is definitely paper, but this one here, I'm curious. And I was thinking, what if I did that for my book? What if I did some just textures, some, you know, acrylics on board, some fun kind of background textures like that, scan them in and use that for the background of certain panels. So I might actually play with that idea because I actually kind of like that a lot. Now, I don't know how often I could reuse those. I might not be able to which would be a bit of a bummer, but I don't know. I'm kind of like contemplating instead of just doing the flat colors, putting some textures with acrylic. So I might do that because I like, like this one here is another one. Now this could have be, is that the same texture? It looks just, no, you never know. It could have been flipped over. I don't think so, but I don't think so, but I do like it a lot. I do like it a lot. So. Maybe we'll do that. I actually did that for another book I did called Boaz, where I did watercolor backgrounds of the sky, and I just put those in the back. So I've done it before, but I haven't done it with this kind of, um, you know, acrylics on board kind of look to it. But the art's good. Um, I dig it. I like this. I like this panel. I like the way the blacks come in. Again, I like those backgrounds. Um, this is a story basically of this um, Irish kid raised by these um, by the Saxtons are going to get raided by the Vikings and the Vikings come and he he uh, is their informant helps the Vikings sack the town and then wants to become one of them. Now we move on to this other story which is Daniel's story and I can't pronunciate his last name I apologize. What is his last name? Z Zizil? Z I don't know. I don't know what to do with the J at the end. Zizelge? Zizel? Don't know. Uh, he's done a lot of, he did Loveless with Brian Azzarello for Vertigo years ago. That's where I first saw his work. Uh, he's very interesting. His style is fascinating. In fact, I would, I would definitely add him to my story, my, um, presentation on artists because hope you guys have seen that go check it out i did a, a presentation at long beach comic-con on different artists and stuff i would add him because 
It's so unique, the way he uses shape, uh, the way he draws with just shapes and blocks, almost like a woodcut, kind of the way he does the angles of everything. Um, it, it makes it very high contrast and it's all very shape oriented. It's quite fascinating. I mean, he's master of silhouettes and things like that. And of course, you got this nice, called atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric perspective where you're adding kind of the atmosphere to show depth and distance. Um, yeah, very cool. Great. I like his art a lot. It's just so unique. I don't know any artist similar to him. I feel like he is the most unique modern comic artist right now with what he does. I think some stories he might not, it might not work. But any of these period stories, like westerns, this kind of stuff, I think it works perfectly. Modern? Don't know. Don't know. Maybe it would work just as fine. Uh, again, beautiful covers. Love this. This color artist is, the cover artist is amazing. Uh, it's another story of this. But look at these. Just great. Great. And I love the way he did the clouds, you know, with the spray and stuff. Really cool. Really cool stuff. Okay, moving on. I'll go on forever. Him. This is now. This is another artist. Uh, it's beautiful work here too. I really like that. This cleaner. Uh, using kind of a deadline rapidity graph or something. I think for most of it. But making everything very dynamic. Uh, the positioning is good. These panels are great. So I'm a fan of all this. Yeah, I would recommend getting this. Definitely if you're into this type of thing. I mean, I will get the next one. <laughs> I will I will probably get the next one because, uh, again, I like these stories. It would be fun if it was all one, but I get it. There's a little bit of nudity, um, so be careful for that if that's an issue. Where was it? Yeah, there's a little bit. Oh, there's more later on, but... Uh, yeah, I dig it. I think that's, is there anything more we need to say about the art? This is kind of cool, and more uh, atmospheric perspective. Something we learned today, maybe, for some of you guys. Oh, this art, this is the last story. I didn't care for it as much. It's about a um, Irish guy who kind of just goes Rambo. It's basically kind of Rambo story, and this this uh, tracker type of guy who does like a pathological analysis. He's like a serial killer, you know, crime scene specialist, and he's doing this analysis on this uh, Rambo type guy who's who's dreaming up his dead daughter or his daughter has left him, and uh, it's it's fine. For some reason, the art doesn't grab me as much, and the story didn't grab me as much as I wanted it to. These covers, though, they do grab me, and that's that one. So there you go. This is the book. Let me know what you guys think. I have some really cool new videos lately. I got these interviews that have been coming out. Please check those out. I think they're the best stuff I have, honestly, on the, on the channel. Um, I have the Long Beach panels I did. Go check those out. Those are cool. My Patreon. I got a bunch of new books and things I'm working on for the Patreon. Go check out Shangri-La and that kind of stuff. And um, that's it. So thanks for watching. Take care. Bye, guys.